Cool. So thank you guys for having me. I obviously have the classier black hoodie of the whole bunch, right? <clears throat> so, yeah, I don't do the hood up. Anyway, I'm going to be talking about NeoVim plus tree sitter equals easy plugins. Now, who am I? I'm Chris. And uh, yeah, it's just really fun streaming. Like, this is one of my favorite things to do. I'm really happy to be part of this conference. And uh, yeah, I have a Twitch, I have a GitHub, I have a Twitter, and I even have a blog that I just recently updated that I still need to put some work into. Warning, there are bad Halloween jokes incoming, right? So it's showtime. So first, I need to like set you guys up with some relevant terms. We're going to be talking about tree sitter, which is the thing that Teej just mentioned. And it's what allows me to do everything within the plugin I made. Uh, and because tree sitter is so portable, it even compiles to Wasm, you can run it anywhere, anywhere even like a browser context would work, which is pretty cool. So that's how I got it to work in that other editor. And hint, I actually edit my NeoVim config in even another editor. So... It doesn't matter. You can make a plugin for NeoVim no matter what editor you choose to use. It's just about making tools that people want to enjoy and use and uh, have fun with. So the next thing we're going to talk about is ASTs or abstract syntax trees. This is what you actually use to represent your code in a way that like a compiler would understand it. And that's what TreeSitter is giving us after parsing our code. It gives us this giant tree structure that we can just iterate and parse through and totally check out every node within our code. Right? A node might be a variable declara declaration or uh, a function definition, things like that. Next up, if you haven't heard of it, Lua is the main language used in NeoVim. Uh, it's what you pretty much have to use to write NeoVim plugins. You might be able to use VimScript. I haven't looked into it. But it has a very similar syntax to JS. So if you are a JS developer, you could write Lua plugins right now. There's some gotchas. And one of them is it's one indexed. That's about it. Really, it's very simple, very easy to use. Uh, and it has a very interesting history. I would really recommend you go read up on why they had to create Lua in Brazil at the time. It's very interesting. But here we see even a side-by-side -side comparison between some Lua, uh, JS on the left and Lua on the right. So what changes? Well, you lose the brackets and you get end. And you change let var const to local. Easy, right? No big deal. So now, our first joke. What would be the national holiday? For a nation of vampires. <clears throat> Fangsgiving. A little bit of history. I wrote a thing called uh, um, Code Biscuits. Basically, there's HTML biscuits, CSS biscuits, and assorted biscuits. These are all inside of another editor. The main thing is, though, I was able to like start, like I made HTML biscuits using the uh, language server that they have inside of the other editor. I did the same thing for CSS. And then when it came time to do one for C Sharp that I let people vote on, the language server didn't work that well. I had to install other plugins to depend on, and it was just a lot of work. So from there, I started looking around and we found TreeSitter and it had Wasm bindings, which is really cool. You can run Wasm within any electron style based editor no problem because of the wasm part like it's really cool so from there we had some pretty cool stuff going i was able to support a bunch of languages using tree sitter inside of another editor at one point you know basically here's a little more history sorry i was inspired by the flutter plugin there's a flutter plugin where if you can't read it very well at the end of every parenthesis or uh you know bracket in there they're going to be annotating the thing that started that set of parentheses so that was my inspiration. I figured, why can't I do that for HTML? We've all seen like, you know, HTML comments saying what the end, uh, you know, div is for or whatever, right? We've all seen it. It shouldn't be part of your code. It should just be an annotation. So I created code biscuits. There's a whole uh, slew of them. Assorted biscuits is the one that's relevant. But really, I made it into Teach's stream at one point and told him what I was doing. And he was like, hey, you know that Tree sitter is right there as part of NeoVim, right? It's just a plugin you install and you're good to go. So that was really fun. Um, yeah, he just really made it seem uh, like easy to do, and I started looking into it. So yep, yeah, I have enough friends that use NeoVim. Why not port it over? The logic must be the same because it's just tree sitter under the hood. So we're gonna get into some details showing off what biscuits are, but first, what do you call two witches sharing an apartment? Brewmates. 
So let's look at some brief examples of biscuits in action. These are taken in NeoVim, even though it's not my editor that I use day to day, doesn't matter. Here is the Rust version working right there. You can see right there, the if coord is changing, the u size changes, they're just annotations of what you're showing. So the main part being is, it's not part of your code, it's just a decoration. We even have examples or uh, options for you to make it only show on the line that you're selecting or based on like the length of the block that you're annotating, things like that. You'll notice it doesn't show on like the very short one above us where it says pub function can be revived, right? So just pointing out, you can choose and you know, like fine tune when it kicks in, when it doesn't. So you have some context. Here in Lua, we see it doing the same thing. You can trim it so it's not a big long line. There's a lot of options, it's really cool. And no, I don't have Drama Sand set up in NeoVim right now. I probably should. Here in JS, we see a similar thing. We get to annotate. We can even use emojis, if you didn't notice that before, as like a prefix. So each language could have their own. And here is the num like the best example of why this is useful, right? Here I am inside of a Go program that I've written. And how would I know what those brackets are for at all without some type of just like notification of it? Right, the else we could get, but the run func command, the var root command cobra, like all that stuff, I don't know, right? I'd have to scroll up for it or something. So it's pretty cool. Gives you a little bit of just like context for what you're doing without having to change what you're looking at. So let's get into some of the technical stuff about it and what actually makes this thing happen. And actually, hold on, did I miss one? Okay, we don't have a joke on these sets of slides. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss a joke. So, this is the init. I'm using plenary just for uh, debugging and stuff like that. But uh, the main parts are, I needed the Rust plugin to make sure I didn't com conflict. But the only ones you care about are NVim tree sitter there and NeoVim biscuits. I'm doing my local version, but you can do the, pl uh, the hosted version just fine. I can even configure the highlight colors and things like that. Uh, we have to do it via the C term config or a C term FG. That's what it is. Another part, we got to make sure we have tree sitter. If we don't have tree sitter, the whole thing won't work. But uh, we need to configure what languages tree sitter is going to use. So I like using maintained, but if you use all, it ends up being something like uh, 47 languages plus like 13 that are in development or something. It's crazy. You get a lot of support with NeoVim or with uh, tree sitter. And then here, these are the options I was talking about earlier, right? So we see cursor line only. That's the one I was talking about where you could just have it on the one that you care about. You can toggle bind it to where you can just flash it on, flash it off, right? Uh, you can do your default config and then all languages will take it and then override individual languages as you see fit. And yeah, there you can see that we're doing the emojis, max length, that kind of stuff. Uh, it does not handle leaving closing brackets together very well at all. It'll probably just do the last one, but I have not tested that enough. It's, it's in development. We got work to do. So, um, Adding virtual text, this is actually the most important part of what we're doing. Without the virtual text support within NeoVim, I couldn't do any of this. They call it decorations in another editor, and we want to look at some other editors too and see if they support something like it. Right? So here, we're going to see a few things. You're going to notice that there's the buffer, there's the highlight group, and things like that, and then there's the line we want to put it on. Highlight group is very important because it is a container for all of the virtual text instances we're going to be creating. And it's actually a highlight group that could be used for syntax highlighting and all sorts of stuff. The key thing is create your own when you're making a plugin. If you try and use the default one, you're going to break other people's plugins and you don't want to do that. Um, here's another really cool snippet that shows how tree sitter is actually working. We can just use get parser here and just jump on in and see, Hey, do we have a parser available for the language we're looking at? If not, well, we just bail out. No big deal. So yeah, very easy, very simple. And we just pass the buffer. Very nice. So I really like it. Um, the next part is after we parse it, we need to actually iterate the nodes, right? We describe this thing as a tree of like, you know, the AST is a tree. It trees in the name even. But it's just a set of nodes. And we just have to crawl them looking at children and all that stuff. And yes, that console log is a little trolly. It's just a wrapper around plenary. I know, I know. Um, here's another thing. Oh, this is very important. Make sure you're using the right hook, right? So when I say hook, it's something like auto command is hooking into. It's a life cycle event of the editor. It's all that kind of stuff. Whatever you want to call it, the same idea is 
is the same all across the board. You are trying to run a function when something within the editor happens. So here I'm using buff enter. That runs a lot. So I had to have Tej actually point that out to me and he proposed a pull request for me that made sure if we're already attached to that buffer, we don't attach again. I was missing that part. I misunderstood how the entire flow worked. So boom, make sure you're not doing too much work in a uh, in an auto command that runs too often because you're going to slow down NeoVim and nobody likes that. So here we go. Here's another good joke. <clears throat> and it's not even like a question, but Dr. Frankenstein must have worked out all the time. He was a bodybuilder after all. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, or throw errors. I think I'm messing that one up a bit. Yes, exactly, Primogen. I need to work on handling my errors uh, better. So next up, let's actually think about if you want to make a NeoVim plugin, what are some of the things you need to look into, right? Where are the docs? What do we look at? What's important, right? We're going to look at our API and resources. I go to the website. Most people are going to recommend you use the help. And the next talk coming up actually dives into how awesome the help within NeoVim is. So I would recommend checking it out. But in my case, I just, I don't know, I like a link that I can bookmark and then search for, right? It's just, I don't know the way I like to do it. But once again, if you are, you know, NeoVim native, you probably just want to use the help in there. Um, here's the auto command docs, as, as always. Every single one of these links I'm going to give you is available right there in NeoVim. I just like these links just in case. There's the ones for tree sitter. This is where you will find that, uh, um, you know, the parser and all that stuff. And this is the core API that has stuff like the, um, the virtual text and all that. Now, here's the thing. If you're really not sure where to go or how to structure a plugin, take a look at other plugins. I think Harpoon is a fantastic example. I call it a smaller example. That is not a dig at it. It means that you can go look at it, trace yourself through it, and have a whole mental map of how the whole thing ties together. It's very simple, straightforward, and easy to like work through. When you want to look at how a larger plugin is put together, I would recommend looking at Telescope or Float Term. Um, they're just going to do things in a different way that, you know, they had to, to make sure that they could do stuff, right? To just make sure they could have the logic be reused in all the places they knew about it, right? So yeah, very cool. Look at other plugins, see how they're made. And then finally, <clears throat> here's another joke. And I think it's our last one. Why didn't the zombie like eating a clown or the clown? <clears throat> he tasted funny. So wrapping up, they mentioned that, yes, I use another editor. Um, I made this for NeoVim. You don't have to be an expert in NeoVim to make a plugin for NeoVim. It's pretty fun. You will need maybe some experts to help review it, maybe help uh, you know, do some pull requests and clean things up, add maybe feature requests. Uh, a, f a few of them, such as the current line only and toggling it on and off, were actually requests to the NeoVim plugin, not the other editor's plugin. So yeah, if we encounter another editor that has virtual text support and we can get tree sitter in it, I can make this plugin for any of them. That's the whole point. So thunderous applause. Thank you guys very much for letting me talk. Um, we're at 13 minutes. I nailed it on the time. I really appreciate you guys uh, letting me speak. And yeah, I got all dressed up for this. I'm really happy to be here. So thank you. <laughs>